there's something really exciting about zig fishing. Uh, it's a tactic that I've embraced a lot over the last 10 years. Dabbled with it when I was younger, just popping up bits of bread and dog biscuits on the surface. But yeah, the angler that appreciates that carp can be caught in more ways than just a pop-up on the bottom or a bottom bait rig over some pellet or boilies, they really do go on to, to catch some great fish. They just work all year round. Gonna see what this is. It's been a little bit quiet this morning, but the sun's right up now. See if we can get a couple of fish. A right result. Fishing in about 25 foot of water, bit of black foam positioned, probably about a foot and a half underneath the surface on one of the zig screws. Yeah, what a great way to go out there and catch carp. I suppose one of the things I love most about zig fishing is the challenges it presents. That's all part of fishing for me, working out pieces of the jigsaw, um, ascertaining how the fish are feeding in the situation, maybe their patrol routes, um, where they want to be, where they're happy spending their time. Um, and a lot of that time, it is in the mid and the upper layers. The main reason I feel zigs are most effective at this time of year, and I'm talking sort of spring into, into summer even, is due to the fact that the fish are at their most active. They've just woken up from a cold winter where they've been dormant for the majority of it, and they're generally moving around the lake and visiting all parts of the lake and spending a lot of time sort of in the upper layers where the water is at its warmest. It could be a case of the fish aren't up for a munch and you're in effect lure fishing for them. You're watching their behaviour, um, their patrol routes, where they're chilling out. Um, you're formulating an attack almost of positioning those zig hook baits at specific depths in the water and trying to entice them to suck in, you know, your pop-up or your piece of foam. Something Alan actually taught me many years ago when I was just sort of getting into the whole zig fishing thing. If you look at a carp's sort of 24 hour clock cycle, how many of those hours do they actually spend like on the bottom, you know, feeding physically on the bottom, yet yeah, we're all out there with baits that are on the bottom um, and realistically you're only waiting for that sort of one, two hour slot, normally a morning or an evening or during the night. Um, and the rest of that day you're just missing out on vital bite opportunities, um, which is where the zigs come into it. As I mentioned, carp fishing in general presents problems to us as anglers. Uh, no tactic more so than zig fishing. They look difficult, you know. Um, big long hook links and whether you're fishing a fixed zig or an adjustable zig, bits and bobs and bits of foams prone to tangles. It just doesn't look very practical. The fact that more often than not we'll scale our tackle right back, eight or ten pound hook links and small hooks and until you get your head around them and start gaining a bit of confidence in them, I can see why people choose not to use them. A few years back, I really got on the screw hype. I was very late to the party with this, but in all of my fishing, I started to incorporate a screw of some kind for my hook bait mounting, and even with the zigs, using the little plastic screws with a, a hook bead and mounting my foam onto one of those. But that's all gone now with the, the launch of these zig screws. So the idea of the zig screws actually came around in spring 2018. I was fishing a club water and I was doing really well on the zigs. Throughout the sessions I used to chop and change my hook baits because on certain days there always used to be maybe a colour foam or a certain pop-up that would work better than others. And I used to spend a lot of time bringing in the zigs, trying to change hook baits and couldn't get my rods back up fast enough, especially if I was fishing over depth zigs and I was feeding floaters at the same time. And I'd use bait screws a hell of a lot in my bottom fishing, especially on the slip D rigs if I wanted to change between wafters, tiger nuts maybe and other baits. I've always fished my zigs with a piece of silicon over the eye just to kick the hook link out at the perfect angle. So I thought there's got to be a way to implement a screw and a kicker, if you like, into one product. And that's where the idea of the zig screw was born. It's just such a simple way of mounting any possible zig hook bait to the shank of the hook with the added benefit that I've got my zig aligner tube there in the form of the, the sleeve that it's built into. My actual first fish I caught on the zig screw was actually one of Church Lake's biggest residents, the two-tone lin at over 45 pounds, um, and that was nailed on a red screw with a bit of black foam, and the hook hold was just exactly what you want from a zig, you know, bottom lip, perfect. But what I was really looking forward to was for spring to come around and get back down to my target water, which is where we are today, which is Kingfisher Lake on the Bluebell Complex. So I turned up for my first session of the year, and I knew instantly that zigs were gonna be the way forward, what with it being spring. Um, I got them out there, all three rods, uh, different depths, different colours, 
and within sort of 24 hours I'd managed to land one of the lake's biggest residents, Hartail, um, at just over 45 pounds and once again it instantly proved just how effective the zigs can be. To create a zig hook link utilising one of the zig screws it couldn't be simpler. I take my chosen hook, which more often than not is a floater claw. Depending on the size of the fish I'm fishing for, the size of the hook bait, it will range from anything from a size 12 all the way up to a size 6. Take my monofilament, more often than not 10 pound NXT zig flow, and I thread that through the eye of the hook along the shank and create a knotless knot, but there's obviously no requirement for a hair here. I whip it around probably around 12 times. Um, I like to whip up quite a lot of the shank because that just helps to bite and grip the, the zig screw onto the shank of the hook. I can then slide my chosen zig screw along. There's a range of different colours available to match the hook baits you're using. Wet the hook with the knot that's not on it and just simply slide the zig screw onto the shank of the hook, leaving around two to three mil coming off the back of the eye to create that nice angle and stopping the monofilament from kinking and closing the gape of the hook up too much. Then it's simply case of mounting your hook bait. If I'm using a pop-up, I will use the 5mm Cora, remove a tiny section of, of the bottom of the bait just to get that bait nice and tight to the shank of the hook. Or if using foam, you can just tighten it right down there again to get that foam nice and tight to the shank of the hook. It's a dead simple way of creating not just zig hook links, but also float hook links too. The three main features, in my opinion, of the zig screws is firstly, the sheer speed in which you can tie a zig rig. That then takes me on to point number two, is hook bait choice. You can literally screw it onto whatever you want, whether that be foam, plastic or pop-ups, and it enables you to chop and change quickly throughout your session without having to tie a new rig. And lastly, I absolutely love to sharpen my hooks. And nine times out of 10, when I get a bite, that hook's finished and you need to tie a new rig. But the beauty of the zig screws is, you can just slide the screw off the hook, cut it out the knot, tie a new hook on, slide the screw back over, and you're fishing again. As mentioned, I got on the screw height far, far too late. It won't be the case with these. I'm glad to have been using them now for at least the last 12 months. They've caught me some fantastic fish, and just like all my hook bait mounting across all the fishing I do, they've now made my zig and float fishing a whole lot easier. Overall, I really think these are a massive step forward in zig fishing, and it means you can spend more time with your rods in the water than faffing around on the bank tying rigs. Head down to one of your local tackle shops now and check them out for yourself.